Got 20 seconds. I'm on, man, to go. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Good. Get those knees up. Explode. Good. Explode. Let's go. Up. Drop four. Let's go. One more. Go. You are listening to the Fight Strength Podcast with your hosts, Bill Daru and Jason Burgos. Hello, my fighting and fitness true believers, and welcome back for episode 18 of the Fight Strength Podcast. As always, it is I, Jason Burgos, senior editor for MMASucker.com, and with me bringing the knowledge and expertise is the strength and conditioning coach at the world-renowned American top team is the one and only Grandmaster Master Blaster of the strength industry, Phil DeRue. Phil, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing good, but like I said, I told you earlier today, my son was up all night, mm -hmm. so he was kind of sick. He had the stomach flu, so you know I had to play Ooh. dad and uh, you know help him out. Did you so have to I deal with that. the classic kid projectile vomit. It was it was crazy. He threw up on me a couple times. Oh. Yep, yep. It was a uh, it was an experience. I'm well, we were lie. just talking about horror movies, so you kind of had like an exorcist horror movie moment yourself. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I didn't even need to be in the film. <laughs> it was all, it's all, it's all real life to me, man. Do Every you, day. Do you have your uh, um, beverage with you in case of any getting parched or dry throat at all this time? Ah, uh, I do have my gallon. You know, oh. I have my gallon of water. I, I freshened it up a little bit. I'm going with the Angry Orchard Stone Dry uh, flavor. Um, <laughs> so I'm pretty good. I'm pretty cool. Pretty relaxed. I had salad for for a little snack. Put too much onion. Is I kind of need to wash off that taste. So I figured the Stone Dry might help. Yeah, that might work, man. You Hopefully you don't have uh, your, your girls not sitting next to you right now. Oh, I already got rolled up on her with the ah, and oh, she wasn't, did it wasn't to her. Good. <laughs> too good for her. Um, now, on this week's episode, we will have the fortune of bringing on a top contender in the UFC strawweight division, and that is Tisha Torres. Now, Phil, you have known Tisha for a long time, going back to high school, way back. Um, as you, you know, and you've also been her strength and conditioning coach for a long time until recently. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Titan Tornado? You know, Tisha's a homie, man. She's, uh, she's been somebody who's been a pioneer in women's MMA and also for American Top Team. When I came to American Top Team, she was actually one of the first females, even, you know, matter of fact, one of the first fighters I actually got to work with. Uh, we've known each other. She's, she's from Broward County. She lived in Fort Lauderdale, so... You know, that's my hometown. So we've known each other, known mutual friends, things like that for a long time. And uh, but yeah, man, I would say with the connection of, of all my fighters, I could truly call her one of my one of my friends um, outside of the gym, outside of, you know, a coach and athlete's perspective. And uh, yeah, man, she's just an awesome person. She's actually right now. We're in the process of calling her. Luckily, we're not on video. Actually, you know what? I wish we were on video because <laughs> she has a face full of paint. She is oh. covered, and she looks like a Ninja Turtle because oh. she is at a kid's. Which one kid's did she choose a, a specific one? I, I told her because she showed me. It was Raphael, and I yes. said, man, that's the best one. I said, you, you, you're you doing dog. your thing. Exactly, exactly. So she made the right choice. I'm yeah. glad. Yeah, because right she choice. wouldn't win Donatella. I would have like, come on now. Michelangelo, I could have lived with Donatella now, but Raphael, the man. Donatello, Donatello was a scientist. What are you talking about? I like Real. Donatello, but, you know, he he was a gangster. He he was a nice guy, you know. But when it came to getting down, he just had a stick. I mean, I don't know if I was thinking <laughs> that. I don't, I don't know if I like that. Hey, hold on. When I was a kid, I used to rock the bow staff. I used to do it, too, in Kempo Karate. Really? So, you know, and you know Tisha is a karate kid herself. So, huh? you know, she, she, used to, she used to kick it with the bow staff and the commas and things like that. We'll get into that later on in the interview, but, yeah. All right, fair enough. Now, this is not the first time we've had on a very talented female fighter on the show. I mean, if you dig our interview with Tisha later, then you can also catch our chats with Bellator fighter and your former UFC fighter, Valerie Letourneau, uh, UFC superstar world champion pound for pound in my ranking, Ioanni Janjacek, uh, we both, who both train under the tutelage of one Phil Daru. And you can find those interviews at our pages on iTunes, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Google Play Music, and of course YouTube and a bunch of other podcast services and options out there. Uh, remember, you know, if you're listening to stuff, please review. I mean, give us a review, share, like, let people know, give us your thoughts, comments, you know, and also just send in questions for Phil anytime you want. Also, uh, now before we move on to 
our next segment before we get to Tisha, I wanted to bring up a conversation you and me had via text during the week about a very popular athletic competition on TV. I'm a big fan of now. I've long been a fan of shows like American Gladiator, American Ninja Warrior, Ultimate Beastmaster. That's a that's a Netflix show. If you guys don't know, that's a really cool show. Uh, recently, I discovered and fell in love with Steve yep. Austin's Broken Skull Challenge on CMT. However, the plot thickens my fitness <laughs> and fighting true believers. Because I found out, the, the journalist in me, I found out from my source that our esteemed co-host, Phil DeRue, you were mm -hmm. actually a candidate to be on the show. Please tell us about that story. It's funny because, I mean, it's not a big deal, but when I was around 26, I was just getting done. I just was, comp you know, contemplating on retiring from MMA. And I had my gym going, you know, 24-7. had about, you know, busy beyond belief, pretty much, you know, so... Uh, some of my, some of my clients and some of my members put in, you know, a request to get me on the show. Mm, right. So what happened was, you know, I, I didn't know about it. They actually did it behind my back. And, um, <laughs> yeah. So at this time I'm training for a fight and, oh, uh, I had about two weeks left. I was two weeks out from the fight and that's when I got, uh, you know, need in the back of my head, oh, ended up having that concussion. And, um, you know, so from there. I ended up having to go see a neurologist and things like that. So at the end of it all, they told me I got the letter in, in the mail to come out and do the audition. And uh, at that time, I was medically unclear to go mm. and do it. So it, it ended up being a double, double problem for me. And uh, I missed out on opportunity, but it is what it is. You know, maybe I'll, I'll throw my hand in there now since I'm ready to go and I'm, I'm semi healthy. <laughs> so ha have you ever watched the show before? Yeah, I've watched a couple of episodes, and I've had I've had a, a couple of my athletes actually try out for it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I'm, like I said, man, I have no time to watch TV, let alone you know sit there and watch a whole you know season of something, unless it's Vikings, and then I really gotta mm -hmm. sit down and watch that. But other than that, you know, I'm really don't have the time, and you know that, Jason, you know how I am. But I would like that. That's a show that I would actually enjoy watching if I had the time. And, uh, and I would definitely enjoy being on that show and dominating. Now, now in, in the, the show, when they have all the, 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 the contestants out there, Stone Cold comes out of the truck. that the, His truck looks like a damn cartel drug truck. Um, he, 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 he asks every you know fighter, what are you doing here? Now, I like to do a little role play. Because we're going to assume you're going to try out. You're going to get mm -hmm. it because you're Phil Drew, ATT Strength and Condition Coach to the Champions. You should get it. Now, we're going to do a real, little role play. I'm going to play Stone Cold. And I'm gonna ask you why you're here, and you. I want. I want to hear your answer. I want to hear your prepared answer to seem like a badass that's gonna whoop ass. Now, here we go. <clears throat> ha ha. <laughs> Phil Drew, beard, man with the five strength, t-shirt. <laughs> why <are> you here? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Stone Cold. I'm actually here to actually take over this whole entire show, including your spot. And if you think that I won't. Well, come on and test it right now, because at the end of the day, everybody's going to understand why I'm here, because I am the number one and I'm taking over everybody and this whole show. So go ahead and go ahead and just retire now because I got this and you can step off and do the, you know, do the retirement thing. All right, brother, I'll see you. Well, I tell you what, whoop ass is going to be open today. No, that was that was pretty good. That was good. I like it. I like it. Let's get a little applause going. That was good. That was good. All right. I'm excited now. I can't wait to see some Daru action on the show now. This week, we will forego our usual Ask Daru segment. And instead, Phil has some words of motivation for you folks out there listening. What words of encouragement to the masses out there in the struggle of life or in the struggle in the strength and conditioning game do you have for them this week? Hold on one second. I'm texting Tisha. <laughs> the preparedness. I'm texting. I'm texting, I'm texting no, I'm texting Tisha right now. She's <laughs> asking. <laughs> okay, let's. let's yeah, five let's, more minutes. Just give me five more minutes. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Hold on. All right. So. Yeah. Change your mindset, right? When I wake up in the morning, my mind is set on one thing and one thing only, and as to what am I going to accomplish today? Each day, wake up with a sense of urgency, with a plan to conquer a goal. 
set small goals to accomplish big ones. When you have to, when you have to be prepared mentally for new opportunities and never be afraid to fail. Fuck failure. Go for what you want and what you believe in. Nothing or no one can stop you but you. So be ready to achieve great things with a purpose. Wow, I'm throwing up gang signs right now. You can't even see it. That was just that, that was that good. It was so good. You know. <laughs> This shit right. is natural. All right, so, uh, it is now time to bring on our guest. She is one of the top strawway fighters in the world. She had an undefeated run for Invicta before joining the cast of the Ultimate Fighter that helped to crown a new UFC strawway champion. She was she has wins over notable names like Paige Van Zandt, Angela Hill, Rose Nama Yunus, Felice Herrick, and Juliana Liam. I mean, some of the very best strawweights in the world. Um, she is 9-1 and a likely challenger to face the winner of Ro uh, Joanna Yunjacek and Rose Namajunas. Now, she is the tiny tornado Tisha Torres. Thank you for coming on the show with us this week, Tisha. Oh, you guys, you're most welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, TT. So let the listeners know exactly who you are and how you got started in the world of MMA. Well, they call me the tiny tornado because I'm 5'1", I'm fast, energetic, and during kickboxing, because I used to be a kickboxer before MMA, I would throw a lot of spin kicks and spin punches. I come from a Taekwondo background. I started karate when I was five. And, well, karate, American freestyle karate slash Taekwondo. Did that until I was 17, and then I decided to start kickboxing when I turned 18 and dated somebody who was doing jiu-jitsu and tried MMA. Basically, it was an evolution from karate, kickboxing to MMA, and MMA had the most opportunities for women at the time, and they still do, so that's what I'm doing, and I'm really happy to be with the UFC. Awesome. Now, first off, let's uh, let's let's take it back. Now, how have you been so far, and and what's going on as of lately? Because we know a lot of changes have happened. Uh, things are good. I got engaged in May to my mm -hmm. fiance Raquel Pennington. Most mm -hmm. of you, if you're listening, probably know her. Uh, I moved here actually to Colorado Springs, Colorado, as well. Um, right after I graduated with my master's degree in criminology in May, I'm just waiting for that. So um, I do have a new team here in Colorado just because it's local. Obviously, American Top Team is pretty far away from here, but I love them. I had a good six years with them, and I'm doing good. You know, I have some stuff in the works right now, nothing concrete and nothing I can tell you listeners, unfortunately, but there is stuff in the works for a fight for me. Ooh. Ooh. There we, go. we can't get any kind yeah. of something. Can we get, like, maybe initials or something, maybe? No, but, but the, the hint would be that y'all probably know what's coming. Oh, all right. Fair oh, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk after this. Don't play, <laughs> Don't play with me, girl. <laughs> we can talk, but the listeners yeah. can't hear that. I hear, oh. I hear. All right. Now, firstly, congratulations on earning your master's degree this past May. That's really impressive. Um, you have mentioned wanting to retire before thirty, but you are right on the cusp of, of a title opportunity. You're you're really right there. You know, Nami Yunus is getting her shot. Van Zandt has lost. Waterson just lost. Andrade just got her shot. And Gedalia lost to Andrade. Um, you seem the likely person up next for a shot. Does being so close make you rethink things a bit? I still want to, you know, uh, put it down in the next few years. But uh, I think 30 is a good goal, you know. I just turned 28, so it gives me two years to uh, get my title shot and try to, you know, get that W. But, um, yeah, I, I do believe I'm right there in line, if not next, next to next. So uh, my next fight, whomever it may be, I think um, is an opportunity for me to showcase my skills and uh, show, you know, my evolution so far. Now, you, like, you have a lot of plans laid out for yourself already, you know, in, in articles you've talked about it after you finished fighting. You, you just mentioned you're engaged to Raquel Pennington. Again, another congratulations on that. It's fantastic. Um, you want to start a family. You want to make use of your, uh, you know, your plethora of degrees. Is there ever a worry, you know, because you have already plans for yourself, that you may lose that edge and straight line focus that a fighter needs to compete at such a high level, especially because you are right there for a title shot? No, I'm actually re-motivated being here in the Springs with Raquel, and she has some big things coming up herself, you know, being in the top five uh, in her weight class, so... She motivates me to, to want it even more again, you know, for a little while I didn't want it as much, but I, I'm re-motivated to want it again, and uh, I feel like my time is coming, and um, I'm ready for that title shot whenever it comes. Yeah, so if for you guys that, that are listening out there, I know you hear kids in the background. Tisha is actually at a birthday party right now. 
with, uh, like I said, she is uh, covered in Ninja Turtle gear, and uh, she is she is Raphael at the moment. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, now you you recently received your master's, which is awesome. Like I said, I've always been proud of that. Um, and now, uh, you know, we talked before in the future with the future plans and things like that. But let the listeners know exactly what's your five year plan from here on out. Five year plan would be to win a uh, world title with the UFC, the strawweight division. If they ever bought Automate, I'd, I'd try to make it down to that. But uh, to win the strawweight championship, to have at least one baby, to get married, to love my life, um, <laughs> <laughs> and to well, we're actually um, wanting to open a gym next year. So we've been in the works okay. with uh, looking at locations and stuff. So depending mm-hmm. on like our fights, our next fights that come up and stuff. Uh, the timeline for that is being pushed back. It was six to nine months. Now it's probably a year just because we have some big things coming. But, um, yeah, we want to open a gym. And eventually, you know, I'd like to work for the government or a nonprofit, something close to my heart, but definitely give back and um, work with uh, children, inner city community. So we'll see what happens. Who knows? Do you have well, any, any – uh, do you have a date set for the wedding or even uh, honeymoon ideas yet? Uh, date was supposed to be May 12th, possibly, but we wanted a fall wedding. Just it couldn't happen this fall because some things came up. So actually this week we talked about having it next fall, but I don't want to wait that long, but <laughs> we'll see. I might give in to her because we do want a fall wedding, but who knows? And honeymoon, um, we've always talked about Ibiza. We like, uh, it, it, we've never been there, but Ooh. we seem to like it from pictures and stuff. All right. All right, so you know me. All right. What was your driving force to get that degree and at the same time work towards being the best fighter that you can be possibly? And at the end, you know, what were the setbacks and what did you have to overcome while in pursuit of both goals? Okay. so what motivated me to get my degree, honestly, was just having feeling like I had so much time on my hands. Although Mm. when I look back, I really didn't have that much time on my hands. (laughs) So (laughs) being a full-time fighter, you know, I would just fight. And then, uh, at the time I was single and I really didn't hang out with anybody. So I'd be home a lot. I'm just like, damn, you know, I really like learning. I've always wanted to get my master's degree. Why not go get it? So I, you know, signed up, got approved or, you know, accepted or whatnot. Got in and get my master's degree, and then I'm like, damn, I don't have any more free time. (laughs) My free time sucked. (laughs) Now is with homework and going to class three nights a week. So um, my motivation to do well, obviously, is I won my degree, and I'm just I'm a school person. I like good grades, so uh, I push forward. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, I lost my first fight. Uh, well, no, my my only loss against Rose while I was uh, in my first semester uh, of graduate school. Uh, but it, I'm not gonna say it was yeah. from graduate school or anything like that. It was really just me being in my head. I'd already beat her once. Not yeah. saying that I knew I was gonna go in there and beat her again. Just we went in that fight, and honestly, like. Rose beat me that night. It could have went either way, but I don't mm-hmm. feel like that was our best fight for either one of us. She's much better than that, and so am I. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it is what it is. We have a rubber match probably coming down the line in the future one day. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so it was uh, pretty awesome to be in school and ha- be able to inspire people to show them that, you know, I'm just a normal person trying to get through life and do my job, although it's like a job that everybody, you know, can look- see on TV or whatnot. But I'm at home doing my homework just like you. So I I received a lot of uh, motivational like messages and inspirational messages from people, so it was awesome. Yeah, you just recently uh, were training with Rose, weren't you? At, uh, down at uh, in Colorado or something like that. I was this past weekend. Yesterday, I went and trained with Rose and like nine other girls. So that was really awesome because I told my coaches that for this next fight camp, I wanted to train with the girls in Denver. And Pat ended up hitting me up and asked me if I wanted to come train, and I went over there and trained. So it was awesome. You know, it's really great to be able to be in a room with, you know, two other strawweights in the UFC, talking about J.J. Aldridge as well. And then they had, you know, other talented girls as well, but them two being the highest besides me. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we have the same common goal. We all want to be number one. We want to be the world champion. But we put that aside for, you know, that two hours, and we just train together and make each other better um, for what's to come next for each one of us, you know? So it was really cool, and I think that J.J. and and Rose are really cool people besides that. You know, business is business, but outside of that, I think we can help each other to, you know, make it there. Cool. Now, I know you miss me and my big mouth, <laughs> all right? But what's your training look like now moving out to Colorado? 
Um, honestly, I have a lot more one-on-one time um, because I don't do as much class. Well, I don't really do any classes at all except for jujitsu. But I do all one-on-one and like specific partners are brought in for me. So I really enjoy that. I mean, I love Mary Tuffy. I love the amount of girls like I have on hand to train with every single day. But I think I needed that more individualized um, time because I feel like I am evolving now. And um, I think this good things are coming, you know. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's what I love to do. So whether I'm in Florida or Colorado, I think I have great gyms and great people to be around. Now, you mentioned how you, you training with Rose Namiyu, so this, this transitions into my next question. Uh, you know, for some time, as you mentioned before, you're at top team for six years. Eventually, you know, working with Phil, and eventually you have someone like Ioanni and Jacek come in and, and to the gym and, and make it her home as well. From a fighter's perspective, what is your thought process when someone you are purposely gunning for to fight is sharing a gym with you? Is it uncomfortable at all at first, or is it like, look, like you kind of mentioned before, we're we going to make each other better, so it's, it's a worthwhile opportunity? To be honest, I only I've only trained once with uh, Joanna, mm-hmm. and that was jujitsu class, and mm-hmm. it was like one or two rolls. I've never trained with her besides that. Did you um, submit she, her? Did I submit her? No. Damn. Um, <laughs> um, it was like a drill. It wasn't even a hard thing or anything like that. Just like you know, a slow, a slow roll. But anyhow, uh, yeah, like at the gym at that time, I don't know how it is now, but at that time, Joanna was doing her own thing and, and only training with the people that she wanted to train with and stuff like that, which is cool, you know? Uh, I know that she knows that there was other girls in the gym that she'd fight eventually, but to me, it really doesn't matter. The, the, she, her being there was awesome, you know? I wish uh, I would have been able to train with her, you know, more or whatnot, or she could help me for my fight camp, but that wasn't the case. So it is what it is, but there's so many other talented girls there when I was there that helped me out, Nina, Jag, you know, Valerie, Amanda, like those girls are in the UFC too, have a common goal, straw weights just like me, and we train together. So it is what it is. And I'm not necessarily gunning for Joanna. I'm gunning for whoever has that belt. Mm. So if Rose wins the belt, then I'm gunning for Rose. So, you know, or, or you know, just whoever has the belt, it's nothing against Joanna. It's like yeah. everybody wants to be in her position, obviously. We're in it for the same reason. Nothing against the girl, but, you know, I want to be there one day, and hopefully I will. Now, your undergraduate and graduate degrees are related to the fields of criminal justice and criminology. Uh, what is it about those fields specifically that got you interested in and say, damn, I want to make a career of this? Um, I, in middle school and high school, um, South Florida and other states, I'm sure, have it too. They're magnet programs, specialized classes. And I was in pre-law from 6th grade to 12th grade. Hmm. So I've always had an interest in law. I thought I wanted to be a lawyer at one time, but not really anymore so now i just would like to work for the government or like i said nonprofit. my other degree actually my undergrad degree is in sociology and criminology so i like i said i like working with people especially women and children and i'd love to give back to the socially disadvantaged especially inner city people because i come from the inner city and don't come from much so it, it, like maybe if you know we do open our gym and we could have a, a class a week where it's free for inner city kids or mm. women oh. who want to learn self-defense something like that i'd like to incorporate once we get going and get on our feet. Now, you turned pro in 2012, a time when women's MMA was really getting well established in the mainstream. Were there any female fighters you admired when you got into a sport and likewise male fighters that you admired that got you into the sport? Um, I've always liked the karate style fighters. So, Ryota Machida, uh, or Muay Thai too, Anderson Silva, like all the older people. Like I used to watch Fight Girls and freaking uh, YouTube because I didn't watch it when it came on the television. Mm-hmm. I would look up to even like Felice Herrig. Like when I fought her, I was like, damn, you know, this is like my made it moment. Like I've looked up to looked up to her, but like I enjoyed watching her fight Muay Thai and stuff. Now I get to fight her now, you know? So that was cool. And then just, you know, the whole Gina Carano back then and Caitlin Young, another Muay Thai girl I, I liked and stuff. So nobody in particular, but I just enjoyed the people who were strikers because that's what I came from. I'm glad you mentioned Gina Carano because me and Phil are big, big Gina Carano fans, right, Phil? Oh, Raquel too. Raquel, <laughs> that's Raquel's girlfriend. Raquel could have her, you know? Well, Raquel, maybe she could have her if she wanted her. But anyways, that's <laughs> ne- neither here nor there, you know? But that, that's one of her crushes. <laughs> Oh, my uh, God. Aren't we all? We all got that in common. Fantastic. It's um, awesome. What are your passions away from the cage? Nothing, n- non emery related stuff that you'd love to do. Well, obviously learning, like I said. But besides that, like uh, recently, I've stepped out of my box living here in Colorado. But I've really started enjoying hiking and being outdoors. Mm. And we, we play on a women's indoor soccer league. And I actually have a game, our last game at 4 o'clock today. So in like an hour, I have a game. So... 
Uh, we're nine and zero undefeated. We're Ooh. about to be ten and zero and get first place. It's been really fun doing that. You know, unfortunately though, I did roll my ankle like a few weeks ago playing indoor soccer. I'm getting more hurt playing soccer than damn <laughs> getting punched in the face, which really sucks. But um, yeah, just like being outdoors, hanging out with my friends and family, and actually just being at home and Netflix and chilling. You know. Are you on the team with Raquel? Yeah, me and Raquel who, play for the same indoor soccer team, is, women's soccer team. Who's the better player? Um, actually, I'd say that me and Raquel are probably equally oh. good. I, I prefer to play defense. She likes more midfield offense, so okay. I'd say she scores more, but I'm a really good defender. But with that said, we're probably, Raquel might hate me for saying this, but we're probably like the worst in the team. But, so, but with that said, <laughs> we're a really good team. So we didn't play like, you know, soccer in college. Most of these girls did. So, but we're a really awesome team and we're both really doing, you know, better each game. You know, we're, we're working hard and we try. I mean, it has to be good though. Even if you are the worst on the team, no one is going to at all say that to you because you could probably beat all their asses, just the two of you. Oh yeah. The girls have already told me that. I'm like, (laughs) you're like teaching more beating people like 7-0. They teach you go play forward. I'm like, no, no, like go play forward. So I go play forward and then I'm like, they pass me the ball and I kick the ball and I miss it. You know, and they're like. It doesn't matter to you. Nobody's going to say anything to you if you miss it anyways. <laughs> I'm like, I know, but I still want to do well for you girls. You girls are so great, you know? But it's, it's nice being on a team. I played soccer in high school all four years, so it's nice being on a team again, and, and I enjoy the camaraderie and stuff. So I, it's like it. I like it. <laughs> now, my last question is uh, women's M- MMA is still relatively new facet of the sport when it comes to the general audience. You know, not, not, the mainstream is really starting to understand how great it is. Um, do you take any responsibility in trying to further women's MMA and show young female athletes that this is a very viable option to continue their athletic pursuits, say, after school, after college or high school? For sure. Like, whenever I have young people come up to me, women, kids, boys, girls, doesn't matter, I let them know that, you know, it is very possible, you know, to work hard at whatever you want in life, whether it's being a mixed martial artist or not. But I do always try to emphasize school is very important because that's something close to my heart, and I believe that every person should, uh, you know, pursue their education. I mean, education might not be for everybody, but there's something for everyone. So I think whether it's going to college or learning a trade, that um, you should do it. All right, that's pretty much it for me. I feel you. You got any other questions in mind? No, we're good. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and chop it up with her after this. She's got a soccer game to go to, so we're going to let her go. And, yeah, uh, let's talk after later tonight about that Florida Georgia line. So I'd like to go. After <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, Tisha, is there want- anything you want to promote in terms of, like, social media, any projects you're working on, pages, anything like that, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat? Uh, I don't have Snapchat, but all the rest are at Torres. if you guys want to follow me. usually post stuff about me and Raquel and our dogs and, you know, whatever. Can but we get I think some soccer highlights me. on there? I want to see some soccer highlights. Oh, you don't... This, I told you, there's probably no highlights for Damn. you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably see a picture tonight with us saying that we won and uh, we're number one. <laughs> I think we I think we get a t-shirt for getting being number one, oh. so I'm excited about this t-shirt. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phil, your social media, let the people know. They, you know, they already know. It's Daru Strong on every handle except for that Snapchat, Daru Strong, number one at the end. Follow me. You know what to do. All right. Uh, you can follow the show, Fight Strength Podcast on Facebook, Fight Strength underscore on Twitter. You can follow me, Cheap Seats Chat on Twitter or Jericho Vendetta on Instagram. That is the show. Tisha, thank you so much for taking time out. I know you have a big game of whipping ass in soccer. I really, we appreciate you taking time out today for us. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I'm going to get back to this party for the next half an hour. So I'll talk to you guys soon, okay? All right. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Have a good one. I am Jason Burgos. That was Tisha Torres. Uh, Phil DeRue, say bye-bye to everybody. Peace.